If you're watching this in order and you just finished the BJT video and are still learning about BJTs and all the glory that that entails, congratulations, that was painful. Hopefully you figured it out and you're trucking on. So glad you're back with me. Today we're actually going to talk about superposition. Now superposition is something that it's great to know theoretically and I'm sure people use it, but I don't think I ever have. Superposition is basically the idea that in a circuit, if you have multiple sources and your circuit is linear, if you take out all but one of those circuits and solve it, or excuse me, all but one of those sources, solve the circuit, then replace all the sources and then take out all but another one of the sources, solve it, and do all of that, the solutions you came up for for each aspect of the circuit can be added together and you'll get the same result as if you'd solved for that circuit, leaving all of those sources in there. So that may be a bit confusing and you may wonder what in the world you'd want to do that for. Now, First, it is a little bit confusing, but that's why we'll go over it a little bit more so it's more intuitive. And then second, you'll want to do this for really complicated circuits where like, oh my goodness, I can't figure this out. In reality, we have a lot of tools out there and if anything gets that complicated, we can usually use Spice or something like that. But the, the concept I think is important here to know that in a linear circuit, that all of these things kind of work independently. And I think that'll help you get a more intuitive understanding of circuits. So there are a couple of limitations and we'll review these again once we're done that you need to be aware of. And as I already mentioned, the first one is these circuits need to be linear. If you have like a microcontroller in there or a 555 timer or whatever, it's not gonna work for you. So you need to make sure that you have an actual linear circuit that you're working with. Um, that being said, these can work with AC or DC circuits. So I'll be using a DC example as we go over this, but it will also work equally with AC circuits. And then two other things are, first, you need to have multiple sources in your circuit, or else what's the point? I mean, you can't really, I mean, technically, you're just doing it, but you've already reduced and eliminated all of the other ones. And then finally, the last thing is that you, if you have a dependent source in your circuit, you have to leave it on there. This is not something you can suppress, which we'll get into that detail, like I'm using the word suppress or getting rid of things and that might not make any sense right now, but as we get into it, I will just point out that dependent circuits or dependent sources cannot be taken out. They have to be left in for each of them, which kind of undermines some of the value of superposition, but whatever. So let's get into this by doing an example, and I think it'll make a lot more sense by doing that. So I am just going to make a very simple circuit with two resistors and two sources. I'll just put that as ground. Now let's make this five volts, 15 volts, and then, um, let's see, what did I do? Okay, we'll make this 300 ohms and this 600 ohms. And so R1 equals 300 ohms and R2 equals 600 ohms. Okay, now you look at this and you think, okay, this can be simplified quite a bit, but it's the concept that I'd like to go over to. So we have two sources here. So what you do is you first choose which source you're going to suppress or you're going to eliminate. Now, depending on if you have a voltage source or a current source, they're eliminated in different ways. A voltage source is eliminated by just putting in a short circuit where it is, whereas a current source is eliminated by putting an open circuit in that same spot. Okay, since these are both voltage sources, let's first suppress this one and suppress it with a uh, short circuit as we were just mentioning. And so this turns into this circuit right there. And then we'll just assume that this is a straight line, but then we still have 300 ohms, 600 ohms, and this is five volts. Now, using Ohm's law, we can very, very easily figure out that the current through R1, so I1, is simply going to be five volts over 300 ohms and I2 is going to be five volts over 600 ohms because we are assuming that current is going this way. So if we calculate that out, I think I'll just punch that into the calculator really quick. And that gives us about 16.7 milliamps. And then that gives us about 8.3 milliamps. Okay, so 
Now we know the current through there using this one source. Now we grab another piece of paper and we'll do it again. Okay, so now we are going to suppress the 5 volt and just have the 15 volt here. So we're going to have our two resistors and then 15 volts. Now this is where it could get tricky because up until this point, on the other one, it made sense because uh, current's going to be flowing this direction. So I already established the current flow there. So make sure that on this, we are still assuming that I2 and I1 are going in that direction, or else you're just going to have a much higher chance of getting confused. So again, very simple. Ohm's law here is going to be now a negative 15 volts over 300 for I1. And then I2 is going to be negative 15 volts over 600. And that is going to give us negative 50 milliamps. And then this one's going to give us negative 25 milliamps, which makes sense because it's exactly the half. Now, so we've done the two and we've got it figured out and that was really straightforward. Now we combine the two. Now our I1 and I2 total, which I guess we could just say I1 total equals 16.7 milliamps minus 50 milliamps and then I2 total equals 8.3 milliamps minus 25 milliamps. Now we could have of course switched the direction of the current in our assumptions but we didn't so we're no we know that we're going to get a negative number and that in reality current's going to be flowing this way and not this way. So that is going to give us negative 33.3 milliamps and that is going to give us negative 16.7 milliamps. So in the original circuit, if we were to solve for this, we are going to get negative 33.3 milliamps going this way and then negative 16.7 milliamps through this way. And that is the concept of superposition, is that we can solve with the sources independently, add it together, and get the same thing. So now I'm actually going to just jump onto LT Spice. I've already set it up. And then um, and I'll show that hopefully my math works and that it matches this. So let me jump on here really quick and confirm that. OK, so here we've got the 5 volts and the 15 volts and the 600 ohm resistor and the 300 ohm resistor. So this is all set up and ready to run. So as I run this simulation, we are given a blank page. So now I just need to come in here and plot the current. Now if you notice on the symbol, the arrow is pointing from right to left. So it's actually assuming the, the opposite direction of current flow than what I assumed. But then as you go over here, we can see that we have for um, R1, uh, about 33.3 milliamps and for R2 we have about 16.7 milliamps. So everything worked out, math worked out, great, that makes me happy. All right, so that's the concept of superposition. Again, very straightforward, not very difficult at all. Um, and the, the complications, the complexity comes in from the fact that you don't use it on circuits like this. You use it on big involved circuits with multiple sources and things are going crazy. But this is the premise, this is the the understanding that you need to have that, again, linear circuits can do this sort of stuff where you can just solve for one, solve for the other, and put it together. And so again, if you have a linear circuit that doesn't have any um, nonlinear, that was redundant, any nonlinear stuff in it, and it's too complex for you to solve, and sometimes, especially if you're able to remove a current source, that can really reduce the complexity because it'll cut out almost full sections of the circuit that you no longer need to worry about. But I don't know. It depends on what you do. For me, I, I don't think I've ever used this other than a couple of times in classroom settings, but it may come in handy if you have to do something like this and you don't have something like LT Spice. But if nothing else, the concept is important and we are building a stronger foundation in basic circuits, which I hope you catch uh, the next basic circuits tutorial and you join with us. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so and I hope you have a great day.